This is a diagram of a turbine which we use in thermodynamics and the turbine is used to generate shaft work. It literally rotates a shaft and it does so by extracting um, energy from a high pressure, high temperature stream of fluid that enters the turbine. It expands within the turbine and then it exits uh, at a lower temperature and a lower pressure. And the difference between the high energy of the fluid flowing into it and the low energy of the fluid leaving it, that net difference is the shaft work that the turbine generates. To make that happen, the insides of the turbine have to be incredibly intricate, but from a thermodynamic standpoint, we don't care about what goes on uh, within this black box. In fact, uh, we just draw it as a trapezoid. Of course, they don't look, in real life, they don't look like a trapezoid, but all we care about is the flow of energy. So what we, what we would say is that if this system is running steadily, under steady conditions, the total rate of all forms of energy entering our system is equal to the total rate of all forms of energy leaving. So I'll draw a control volume around the turbine and what we're concerned with are all the different ways energy can flow into it. Obviously energy will flow in from the high pressure, high temperature steam entering the turbine. It'll leave as the lower temperature, lower pressure steam. It'll also leave as shaft work. So there's various ways energy can get into the turbine. We can have internal energy entering. It can have, there can be kinetic energy of the fluid entering and potential energy of the fluid entering. So these three forms of energy enter the turbine at this location. One form of energy that's real easy to forget and it's not uh, terribly intuitive, is known as flow energy or flow work. And it's the work required by the fluid, the upstream fluid, to, to uh, push the downstream fluid into the turbine. To conceptualize this, I've deleted the majority of the feed and I put a little um, piston cylinder device or a little syringe here. And the syringe, the fluid, it needs to push the uh, downstream fluid into the turbine. And that requires a downward force on the plunger and that force I'll call F1. And that force is equal to the pressure at point 1 multiplied by the cross-sectional area of the pipe, A1. And over a period of time, this plunger is displaced a distance, L1, and I can define the amount of flow work, W flow, as equal to the force times the length, F1, L1. And you can show that this is equal to P1 times the displaced volume. So written out, the force is the pressure times the area. The area times the displaced length is the volume. So here we have P1, V1. And the rate at which flow work is entering the system, W flow dot, is equal to the derivative ddt of p1 v1. If the pressure is constant, that's equal to ddt. If the pressure is constant, that's equal to p1 dv1 dt. Or I can say p1 dm v1 hat dt. And since v1 hat, the specific volume at state 1 is a constant, I'll end up with m dot times p v1. And this is the rate at which flow work enters a system, or, or we'd say the rate at which pv work enters a system. So to demonstrate this, the upstream fluid is pushing the fluid down into the turbine and it's doing flow work, the work on the shaft uh, being driven into the turbine. Not only does the fluid have to push fluid into the turbine, the fluid leaving the turbine has also got to push its downstream fluid out against some pressure, P2. So we look at the flow work at state 2, the exhaust of the turbine, uh, some work is, is leaving the system. So here we see fluid pushing this plunger along as it exhausts or leaves the turbine. So again, if we look at our energy balance, we've got internal energy entering associated with molecular interactions. And in addition to kinetic and potential energy, we also need to account for this flow energy entering. So here are the four forms of energy entering the system. And that has to balance, that ha at steady state, that has to equal the total rate at which all forms of energy leave the control volume. So I'll say those are all equal, those four are equal to the internal energy leaving, the flow energy leaving that the system is doing, uh, plus any kinetic and potential energies leaving. But there's also one other form of energy. Of course, in a turbine, there's shaft work leaving uh, the turbine by rotating the shaft. So I need to add that into my energy balance. So I'll say plus shaft work leaving. And with a turbine, this is what we're primarily interested in. And let me write this uh, symbolically. So the rate at which internal energy is entering is M1 U1. The rate at which flow work enters is M1 dot P1 times a specific volume, plus kinetic energy, the rate at which kinetic energy is entering, plus the rate at which uh, any potential energy is entering. And that has to equal the rate at which internal energy is leaving, M2 dot U2, plus the rate at which the system is doing flow work, M dot 2 P2 V hat 2, plus the kinetic energy leaving, M dot 2 V2 squared plus m dot, the kinetic or the potential energy, m dot 2 g z2. And then finally, what we're primarily interested in is the shaft work 
that the turbine is producing. In a nutshell, if these three forms or these four forms of energy are large entering the turbine relative to the four forms of energy leaving the turbine, that means that this turbine can produce a great deal of shaft work. In other words, if it can extract all of this energy or a lot of this energy, it can do uh, more shaft work. We can simplify this a bit by saying that the mass flow entering the system has to equal the mass flow leaving the system at steady state. And let's just drop the subscripts and just call it m dot. And I'll rearrange this expression. So here it is again, I factored out the mass flows. One thing to look at and to keep in mind is that this, these terms, this u1 plus p1 v hat 1 and u2 p2 v hat 2, they're often seen in analysis of thermodynamic systems. And they're seen so much, in fact, that for a matter of convenience, we'll say that this u1 plus p1 v hat 1, we're going to call it h1. And we'll give that h a name, we'll call it enthalpy. So I'm going to solve for w out now and make that substitution for h. So I've got w out is equal to the mass flow rate times h1 plus 1 half v1 squared plus gz1 minus h2, the, uh, minus 1 half v2 squared minus gz2. An assumption that we can often make is that these terms, this h1 and h2, are usually fairly large compared to the kinetic and potential energy differences. And they're so large, in fact, that it may only make a percent or two difference. If we're trying to calculate w out, we might get by by just saying w out is equal to the mass flow rate through the turbine times h1, the enthalpy of the stream entering, minus h2. In analyzing this system, if I come back to a, the diagram, what you're often told, or what you're often uh, available to you, is the temperature and the pressure at the inlet, or in point one, and I can use those, I can look those up in a table, use those to look up H1, and oftentimes I've got uh, T2 and P2, and I can use those to look up H2. And when I want to find the work leaving the turbine, the, the work that the turbine is generating, if I know the mass flow rate, I know H1 and I know H2, the amount of enthalpy extracted from the stream is equal, effectively equal, to the shaft work that the turbine is producing. Lastly, I want to note that I don't even need, I don't need to use enthalpy to solve these problems. I don't need to know what it is. As long as I've got a conceptual feel for what internal energy means and a conceptual feel for what flow work means, I could use this relationship H1 is equal to U1 plus P1 times the specific volume at state 1. That's all I need. If I went to a table and looked up H, if I knew how to find it in H, if I go down, I've got a piece of a table if for superheated steam. And if I look at this, Here's superheated steam at a pressure of 1 megapascal. So let's say that P1 is equal to 1 megapascal or 1,000 kilopascal. And if I knew that the temperature, for example, was T1 is equal to 500 degrees C, I can look up, I've got 500 degrees C and 1 megapascal. I want to show you that I don't even need this column, uh, this enthalpy column. Because if I do a calculation, I know that H is equal to U plus, again, P times the specific volume. And in this case, U, if I plug in numbers for U, P, and V. So here I looked up a value of U. U for this case would be uh, 3,125 kilojoules per kilogram. Uh, the pressure, again, 1,000 kilopascal. And the, inter or the specific volume in this case is 0.35411 cubic meters per kilogram. And when I do this calculation, what I come up with is a value of 3479.1 kilojoules per kilogram. And that is the exact same value uh, for enthalpy. So this column, this column for H, is completely redundant. I don't need it whatsoever. But it's really nice. It's awfully nice because otherwise I would have to make this calculation over and over again. And because we see it so often in thermodynamic analysis, uh, for convenience, uh, they've added this extra column.